this video, I have demons, devils, and mobsters. Oh my. Stay tuned. Hello, Oathbreakers and Planeswalkers of the Internet. This is Chad with the Signature Spell Bomb YouTube channel, bringing you another tasty, tasty Oathbreaker deck. Today is an Obnis Nixilis. The Adversary Sacrifice deck. It is fairly budget, but I hope you enjoy it. Let's get on into it. Our Oathbreaker is Obnixilis the Adversary. He's a Rakdos Oathbreaker with Casualty X. When he enters the battlefield, we can sacrifice a creature to him. And we're going to create a copy that has uh, an amount of loyalty on it equal to the sacrificed creature. His plus one is each opponent loses two life unless they discard a card. If we control a demon or devil, we gain two life. There's an awful lot of demons and devils in this deck, so that's possible. His minus two is create a 1-1 one, one red devil creature token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target, which is always really good. And his minus seven is target player draws seven cards and loses seven life. So just a quick recap there, the first ability is going to hurt our opponents unless they discard. It might get us some incidental life. Our second ability will give us a creature that will defend our Obnixilix is, because we'll probably end up with more than one. And it also has removal on it, and our last ability will either refill our hand or it might be a death sentence for an opponent. Let's go ahead and let's see what our signature spell is. It's Spoils of the Vault. We choose a card name and reveal cards from the top of our library to re reveal a card with that name. Put that card into our hand and then exile all other cards revealed this way. And we lose one life for each of the exiled cards. Spoils is a tutor and a tutor in your command zone will often put your opponents off of the game. But because it has such a big downside, I have had it trigger a table less often. It will get you your toolbox removal spells. And there is a slight combo in the deck, but I don't know that you want to use spoils to find it. I've accidentally killed myself with this card, so I find it's just very fun to play. Bloodline Pretender makes this deck list again. It was in our deck list a week or so back. I think you'll probably remember it from the Changeling deck. We're going to probably choose a demon or devil when we play it, and whenever a demon or devil enters play, we're going to put a 1-1 counter on that creature. Burnish Heart costs 3, it's a 2-2. Two, two. We can pay 3 and sacrifice, search our library for up to 2 basic land cards, and put them on the battlefield, tapped. Since we're playing a sacrifice deck, this is just a great option for us, since we want to sac permanence anyway, and it's ramp that's available to us in our color, since we don't have green. Changeling Outcast costs one. It's a 1-1 one, one that can't block or be blocked. Counts as a demon or devil. You might see a little bit of that in this just because I, I love changelings and it's a pool I often go back to. Demon Lord Belzenlock for four and two black is a 6-6 six, six Flying Trampler Elder Demon. When enters the battlefield, we exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a non-land card. We put that card into our hand. If the mana value was 4 greater, we repeat that process. Demon Lord Bells and Lock deals 1 damage to us for each card put into our hand this way. So this can maybe draw us a bunch of cards. It depends on what we hit. Since Oathbreaker is a little bit of a slower for format, I don't think I'm running a lot of 6 or, I'm sorry, 4 or greater mana cost cards. But honestly, it's been a bit. Dreadfast Demon for 5 and 2 black is a 6-6 six, six flying demon at the beginning of our end step. We sacrifice a non-demon creature. If we do, we create a token that is a copy of Dreadfast Demon. Honestly, if this triggers us losing a creature to get a 6-6 six, six flyer in response is not terrible. Again, we want to sacrifice. That will hit our devils. Fireblade Artist is a 2 cost 2-2 two, two with haste that when... We hit our upkeep, we can sacrifice a creature. If we do, it deals two damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So this is good planeswalker removal. It's another creature in our deck. It is a sacrifice outlet. So it does everything this deck wants it to do. Footlight Fiend is a 1-1 one, one devil for Arachdos. When it dies, it deals one damage to any target. Grenzo Dungeon Warden costs X a black and a red. 
What enters the battlefield with X11 counters on it? If we pay two, we can put the bottom card of our library into our graveyard. If it's a creature card of power less than or equal to Grenzo's power, we put it onto the battlefield. So this is a way just to cheat cards from the bottom of our library into our deck. It doesn't always work. It's just another one of those random pieces. This deck isn't like super tuned com for competitive as much as it is tuned for fun. Instrum Predator costs two, a black and a red. It's a vampire dragon with flying and it's a 3-3. Three, three. That is a lot of stuff. When it becomes tapped, we can exile up to one target card from a graveyard and put a 1-1 one, one counter on Instrum. We can sacrifice another creature and it'll gain indestructible till end of turn and we tap it. So we can actually use the free sack outlet on this creature to tap him just to put 1-1 one, one counters on him. We can put 1-1 one, one counters on him every time he attacks. He is graveyard removal and hate for our opponents. Dulgent Tormentor for three and two black is a five three flying demon that at the beginning of our upkeep, we draw a card unless an opponent has sacrificed a creature or plays three life. So I don't know a lot of opponents that want to pay the three life all the time in a 20 life format. So this gets a little bit more value in Oathbreaker than Commander and sacrificing creatures when we're building a board could be very unhelpful to a lot of decks. Most of these flying creatures I want to mention are really good as Planeswalker hate as well because they'll go over the army to hit. Jury Master of Review is a Rakdos Human Shaman Legend. She's a 1-1. Whenever we sacrifice a permanent, we just get to put a 1-1 counter on her. When she dies, we deal damage equal to her power to any target. You can probably see how she fits into the deck. Lorcan Warlock Collector for 5 and 2 black. It's a legendary creature, Devil. It's a 6 6 with flying. Whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you may pay life equal to its mana value. If you do, you put it onto the battlefield under your control. It becomes a warlock in addition to its other types. Milliken is a 2 2 that we can tap to mill a card and add one colorless mana to our mana pool. Milling cards from our deck is not really negative. We do have some things that will pull our big demons and would otherwise be hard to cast directly to the battlefield. So Milliken's good for that. And it's a zero one construct. Necropolis Fiend for seven and two black is a four five flying demon with delve. So if our graveyard gets a little chunky and we can't get stuff out of it, we can actually use it to pay for Necropolis Fiend. If we pay X and tap it, we exile X cards from our graveyard and target creature gets minus X, minus X only of turn. So that's removal using our graveyard as well. Noxious Gear Hulk for four and two black is a construct with menace. He's a five, four. When enters the battlefield, we may destroy another target creature. If a creature is destroyed this way, we gain life equal to its toughness. Palladium Mirror costs three. It's a two-two and it taps for two colors. Again, just ramping our colors. We are running some big boys, some big chunky creatures. Pitiless Plunder is three and a black. Whenever another creature we control dies, we create a treasure token. Since we're going to be sacrificing our creatures, these treasure tokens will come in handy to pay for other things. Relic Golem can attack or block unless an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. If we pay to and tap it, target player mills two cards. This can self-mill us to get big big things into our graveyard. It can also uh, uh, hit an opponent as well. So, Shifter of Skulls for three and a black. It's a 4-3 with the Void. Whenever another non-token creature we control dies, we can create an Eldrazi Scion creature token. Those 1-1 uh, one -one Scions are not as good as treasure but they are as good as treasure because creatures we can sacrifice and treasure permanents we can sacrifice will play into jury and some of our other outlets. So there you go. Soldevi Adnate for one in a black is a one, two. If we tap it, we can sacrifice an artifact creature or a black creature and add a man black mana to equal to that creatures. Oh, sorry. We can tap to sacrifice a black or artifact creature. We add an amount of black mana uh, equal to the sacrifice creature's mana value. Uh, Solemn Simulacrum is a four cost two, two that will let us search our library for basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. And when it dies, we draw a card. Togar Famine Incarnate costs six and two black. As an additional cost to cast a spell, we may sacrifice any number of creatures. The spell costs two less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way. 
when Togar Famine Incarnate enters the battlefield, up to one target player's life total becomes half their starting life total rounded down. I don't think I need to tell anyone why that's good. If we play this from the graveyard for cheap, it's wonderful. If we play it to play and sacrifice some stuff, that fits into the deck's wants and needs. And if we can play it more than once in a game, we can you know, do just massive damage to our opponents. Traxos Scourge of Korg costs four. It's a seven seven with trample when it enters the battlefield tapped. It doesn't untap during our untap step. Whenever we cast a historic spell, we may untap Traxos. We're running quite a few legendary creatures amongst the demons and jury. Uh, we're running quite a few artifacts amongst our ramping mana. Plus we're gonna be able to create a uh, treasure. Actually, the treasure doesn't untap him, I just realized reading that, but uh, as a 7-7, seven, seven, we'll probably get to use him multiple times during the course of the game, hopefully. Venomous Changeling costs two and a black. It's a 1-3 Changeling Death Touch. Victimize lets us choose two creature cards in, in our graveyard. We sacrifice a creature, and then if we do, we return those chosen cards to the battlefield tapped. Village Rights lets us sacrifice a creature to draw two cards. Amorphic Axe will equip to a creature, making it plus three plus O and give it every creature type. Black Blade of Forge gives a creature a plus one plus one for each land we control. Bone Hoarder gives us plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Mimic Vat, uh, whenever a creature dies, we can imprint it under Mimic Vat. Then each turn we can pay three and tap it to create a token that's a copy. That token creates haste, but we do have to exile at the beginning of the next end step. It's really good to get one of those big demons that has a come into play effect, or just a really good card an opponent has that you want to cheat off of uh, under Mimic Vat and use it. You can also use it uh, not on your turn. It doesn't actually say you have to use it as a sorcery, so if you need an emergency blocker or, a com or some sort of trick at the end of an opponent's turn, you can use Mimic Vat for that. Sigil of Distinction, cost X, enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it. The equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each charge counter on Sigil. See, massive pumping for our unblockable and our flying creatures in case we have to go that route. Spine of Ishtar, cost seven, when it enters the battlefield, we can destroy target permanent. That's any permanent. It's one of the reasons it makes the deck. There's also a way to sacrifice it to uh, gain the mana out of it to play it again, because whenever it is sacrificed, you put it back in your hand. So we can actually play Spine of Ishtai as a removal spell multiple times during the course of the game, which is great. It's wonderful. We love it. It's a great uh, sacrifice target, and it will untap Traxos every time we play it. Uh, Cutter's Vicious Return for two and a black. It's a Saga. After our draw step, we put a lore counter on it, and when it enters play on the first verse, you may sacrifice a creature. When you do, Calder's Vicious Return deals three damage to any target. At two, each player discards a card, and at three, we return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it, and it gains haste. Finally, let's get into the lands. We have Baron Moor. Um, we can sacrifice it to draw a card. It's just hidden draw in our mana base. Bloodfell Caves for fixing. Majuku Bog for opponent's graveyard hate. Command Tower for fixing. Exotic Orchard. Field of Ruin will let us destroy problematic lands and go and get a basic land. It'll also let us mana fix. Forgotten Cave is hidden draw on our mana base. Mortuary Mire lets us put a creature card from our graveyard um, on the top of our library. Mountains. Myriad Landscape to let us go fix either two, go fetch either two uh, swamps or two mountains. Snow Covered Swamps, you can run regular swamps. This is just what I'm running. Temple of the False God. And finally, we're back around. So for the basics, I don't ever really list a number, but whatever rounds out the deck to 60. That is the whole deck. I hope you guys loved it. Please drop a like, share, or subscribe for me. It really helps out the channel, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you again for dropping by.